Live from Orlando, it's SiliconAngle.com's continuous coverage of Sapphire Now, The Cube, powered by EMC, where information lives. We're here at SAP Sapphire for continuing coverage of Silicon Angle's The Cube, where we're cube casting live with a special guest, David Vellante, senior analyst. And we keep on and I are speaking with uh, Tom Peck, the senior vice president and CIO of Levi Strauss, which is a really big deal because at SAP, a tech conference, it's now a business conference, a lot of partners and, and ecosystem announcements. I was just met with the CEOs of uh, SAP. A lot of great you know, vibe here, a whole new SAP. But Levi's is a big success story. Um, you guys were a proof of concept uh, case study with SAP and v, um, EMC. Mm -hmm. um, so, Tom, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you, glad to be here. Thanks and, for having me. And I appreciate what, you coming on. And tell us quickly what's going on with why you're here, and then talk about what's going on with, with uh, Levi's these days. Sure. Uh, thanks again for having me. First of all, uh, a quick introduction to, to Levi's. Is, is the CIO of uh, one of the largest casual apparel companies uh, we have three brands, Levi's, uh, Dockers, and our signature brand. Uh, we're in 110 countries around the globe. And um, I have uh, the honor and privilege of running the technology around the globe for the company, everything from our retail systems and point of sale to our global supply chain, um, demand forecasting, planning, uh, corporate uh, systems, HR payroll sourcing, and, and clearly the infrastructure. Um, we, uh, we as a company are uh, doing some great things. We're transforming ourselves. We have uh, huge, huge uh, growth plans, uh, investing in new product lines. Uh, we've got uh, retail growth strategies. We are moving from uh, what today is largely a very regional-based uh, model of how to run the business to more global brand-led uh, uh, way of running the business. And, and what's happening is it's putting a lot of pressure on, on us as an IT function and technology function to enable the, the company to grow and scale and still perform and, and move IT from uh, what is historically a very back office, behind the curtains function to a very front office growth engine to help grow the company's revenues. So a lot of exciting things going on. Look forward to sharing some of those. A little interesting uh, background too. You were at uh, M MGM Mirage, right? And NBC Universal, yes. right? So Levi, a little different, um, right. little different gig for right. you. Right. Yeah. yeah, many many years at, uh, at GE and NBC Universal, uh, consumer products and, and theme parks and, and home video and very customer consumer facing. And then off to MGM Mirage, again, very consumer customer facing. Come from a, uh, a background where the consumer is uh, you know centric uh, and uh, the technology's got to always work, always on mentality, and uh, that's really why we're here um, um, celebrating some of the infrastructure successes that we've had uh, with SAP and um, you know, sharing the success specifically of what we've done in our proof of concept with uh, VCE and the VBlock technology. One of the things that we've been talking about here at Silicon Angle on the Cube is this idea of transformation at scale, and obviously the consumer business, they've been involved in trying to get close to the consumer, understand trends, market intelligence, but now that's everything. IT is now consumerized, so mm -hmm. you have essentially all these tools, software and real-time capabilities. That's a challenge, and most companies struggle with that, so let's talk a little bit about you know, how you handle that, and then let's dive into the SAP case study. Mm -hmm. How do you look at that and how do you, you organize your, your, your thoughts and your roadmaps and your product plans? Sure. Uh, like I said, we're, we're uh, over 110 countries around the globe and one of the challenges we have, uh, we're burdened a little bit by those siloed infrastructure and siloed systems that we've been talking a lot about the past couple days. And uh, with time zone constraints and maintenance windows and batch programs, it's really hard to, to get to the, the mobility and the reach that SAP has been talking about and that always on and that real time uh, mentality. That's what we're really trying to strive for. Um, so what, uh, what we're doing as a company is uh, trying to consolidate our technology stack and our platforms. SAP is core to that strategy and some of our infrastructure partners. Uh, we want to um, streamline our solutions, uh, drive uh, capabilities that are global in nature. You're seeing our organization change from, again, regional and country located to more global centers of expertise where we can drive depth of knowledge and depth of understanding while also having uh, business engagement IT professionals out there with the client and with our business partners to drive demand and uh, requirements and business analysis. So you're seeing us go through a transformation as a company um, where uh, we want to work with fewer technology providers, more strategic partners, and um, have the talent in-house that uh, can, can do on-premise deployment of hardware and software, but at the same time, can leverage some of these uh, these um, newer technologies that we've been talking about at Sapphire uh, the last couple of days because um, 
Yeah, absolutely right. Trying to simplify, standardize, drive to real time. Uh, the CEO, the board, our business leaders all demand uh, always on real time information and cost containment. And it's really hard to do all of that. Sometimes they're yeah. mutually exclusive, but some of the things we've been talking about here help enable that. The the role of a, the um, chief technology officer, the CIO, and, and the geeks in the companies has moved from glass house, behind the curtain, as you mentioned, to much more strategic role and, and the things that you're talking about. Talk a little bit about what's changed. Um, we were talking earlier about the vendors, technology, selling technology, you talk about silos. Talk about what's changing, it's the role of the CIO and the organization and, and the fit there. And you, we're talking about business outcomes. And, right. and it's not about technology anymore. Just talk a little bit about what's changed just right. in the past five years or 10 sure. years. Well, first of all, a, a shameless plug, I'm, I'm surrounded by some great people, great business leaders, my CTO, Bart Hecht, and the head of my SAP um, shop, uh, Tammy Amaralt, uh, and, and many other VPs on my staff. Um, we, we all share a lot of the, the same vision and uh, the transformation that, that's going on. I think a, a couple things are, are really driving some of the change, at least from my perspective. Um, I, I think that the, um, the first thing is uh, we're seeing, or at least I'm seeing, uh, the old school of, of putting technology in, to put technology in, and, uh, and to enhancing your resume based on the size and scale and the number of servers you support and how many data centers. Big is not always good anymore, okay? <laughs> Simplification, standardization, consolidation, small, less complex, simplified is actually good. So you're seeing a change in mindset, a simplification mandate that's coming out. Um, that's across the board, that's not just throwing money at things and it, stacking up servers or it, bulking exactly. up, it's really being smart. Exactly, and, and I think that the, the partners and the vendors that we deal with, the message to them is not that we're trying to necessarily uh, save money and spend less money with them. That's not the point. That may or may not be true, but we want to redeploy money from back-end infrastructure to more front office, revenue enhancing, business value and productivity, and that's true of our resources as well. So help us save money and drive automation productivity on the back-end and consolidate and simplify, which allows us to redeploy and shift to the front-end. So I, th I think that's a, a, a major shift. I think that um, the other thing that's not necessarily new, but we're, we're driving this uh, pervasive in our culture is um, the mindset of technology and IT to be a break-fix organization uh, to react to problems and, and to reward heroes for fixing fires is shifting to a more preventative uh, anticipation, proactive, reduce failure modes and try to uh, forecast problems ahead of time and build that resiliency and that uh, uh, reduction in failure modes into your environment early. And, um, and it's I a new IT culture mindset, really. It, it, exactly. Bury the beepers kind of thing. It, exactly. Yeah. And, and, you know, there, there's, there's <laughs> always a need um, for um, uh, break fix, there will always be, and you know, uh, one of the benefits of, of the, the the VCE coalition and the VBlock and cloud computing is a more general topic, is shifting the, the 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 spend mix away from maintenance and more to to programs projects, and you know that's uh, that's nothing new again. But now we're actually seeing the reality of the technology and the services that that can actually help move that needle a little further. Where do you think that comes from? Is it is it I mean it's probably a combination of things, but you got Google, you know, driving the consumerization of IT, mm -hmm. uh, although you know you're not really running your business on Google and Amazon. Um, you've got maybe is this you know C CEO or the, the the business lines driving it? Is it technology maturity? You know, all of the above. Yeah. What, what do you see there? I, I think it's a, I think it's a little bit of everything. Um, I, I think that um, our business leaders are um, much more technology savvy and hungry than in decades past. I think technology uh, more than ever before is uh, critical to enabling the business. At the end of the day, for most companies to include Levi's, um, our brand, our product, and our consumer is ultimately our core. Uh, the technology and uh, creative thinking and good process is absolutely an enabler. So um, you're, you're, you're starting to see a, a very top-down, board-driven, CEO-driven, leadership-driven mandate for IT to be better, faster, cheaper. Um, and you're also seeing uh, the technology sector in general start to transform. I think uh, you know most of our partners realize that um, they need to be different. And the, the, the quick story I like to share is um, one of the uh, the catalysts behind getting us involved in the whole VBlock and VCE coalition is um, I was burdened with multiple technology companies selling me in silos. They're, they're pieces of solutions. And ultimately, CIOs like me, I'm not really interested in buying technology. Uh, it's commoditizing over time. I want to buy uh, solutions to solve business problems. And if you want to virtualize SAP, then bring VMware with you, 
bring EMC with you, bring Cisco with you. So several months ago, we brought about 50 of the smartest engineers and executives from this coalition uh, to Palo Alto. We got together and we started a brainstorm. And uh, that happened to be about the same time this uh, VCE Acadia coalition was forming. And so what you're starting to see is the, the vendor ecosystem out there is now becoming much stronger and much tighter link. And people like me are now buying solutions instead of commoditized boxes or standalone products. Well, let's break that down. I mean, let's talk about like that. So from Palo Alto, that meeting, you had that meeting. Um, you're involved in this case study. What happened? Talk, t- let's talk us through that process. Sure. Um, I think that um, technology companies are always interested, obviously always interested, in getting proven success stories out there and customer testimonials. <laughs> uh, clearly... Especially like Levi's. I mean, big customer, big yeah, brand. We're, 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 you know. we're an iconic brand and um, uh, one of the largest casual apparel companies um, on the planet yeah. and, and a large SAP shop. Yeah. And um, I, I think that, um, you know, with all due respect to technology uh, companies out there, the best way to sell a product is through a customer testimonial, especially from a brand and or a CIO and or a peer that you trust and know. So I think that the coalition saw value in that. They saw that uh, my team and I and the company in general had uh, a very uh, proactive vision on, 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 on how to leverage the infrastructure and the technology going forward. So we created this win-win situation. And we had some of the best and brightest from this, the coalition partners across um, you know, SAC, SAP, Cisco, EMC, and VMware and Accenture come together with some of my best people and uh, in, in a very methodical, detailed uh, It's kind of process. unusual. It's not normally like they don't see this very often. No, no. I mean, we, we had a project lead assigned to it. Uh, we had regular meetings. Uh, we set up a, a working lab. We, we physically made a, a copy of our production environment of SAP, put it in a lab. I mean, this wasn't some half-baked lab concept. This was the real deal. And we tested it under load, and we got some of the best people from uh, from the ecosystem involved. And uh, you know that could never have been sold to me in a PowerPoint. Um, <laughs> seeing it live, testing it, and seeing the investment from the VCE partners um, ultimately is what uh, you know proved it to work. And, and you know back to the question of of what's changing. That's that's key to what's changing. You know that the the technology is commoditizing. It's it's about the ecosystem and how it comes together to solve my problems. It, it's interesting, you, so you basically created this sort of virtually integrated team, mm-hmm. right? You broke down the silo, so integration drives value right, for right. you, right? It's critical. I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the dynamic of virtualizing mm-hmm. SAP, right? That it gives a lot of people some concern, right? right? right. I get a legacy application, it works, I don't right, want to mess with right. it, but at the same time, you've got the tension to Increase the speed of your right, business, right. lower your costs. Right. So, how did you sort through that dynamic right. with your team? Sure, um, you know, Levi's, as as most companies have been virtualizing for for quite some time, last several years, but it's largely um, server based virtualization, and it's all good. Um, you know, the, the the solutions, the software, you know, VMware, it's all it's all good. Uh, but there's a need to do more to go ab- above and beyond that. And uh, let's be real candid: until you can virtualize your yeah. your core ERP system, everything else is is kind of secondary. Um, many people who have gone through uh, large ERP implementations are, are largely risk averse. Um, SAP, uh, in particular, it's a big, big deal, and yeah. you never want to you never want to put your production you know projects. It's a at long risk. process, and it's 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 hard. And uh, you're done. Yeah. yeah, don't touch it. Right, right. <laughs> and, and you know we we um, we virtualized our uh, development test environment today, uh, leveraging existing partnerships, and it works. Okay. But nobody wants to be that first to, to virtualize production, especially with a company of our size and scale and the volume and the transactions that we do around the globe. And it's only going to get more challenging going forward because I'm talking about merging today what are three um, independent ERP implementations into one global SAP process. So it's, it's, it's only going to get more problematic and more challenging um, over time. But um, but yeah, breaking down the silos, bring, bringing the, the, the partners together and... Um, uh, you know, figuring out how to make people like me and, and, and my staff and, and more importantly, my board, my CEO, and my business partners comfortable that, that this is a calculated managed risk, that, it's, that it's, not, it's not too bold, it's not too far out there, that it's not vaporware, that it's real. Um, and it's I, valuable. And, and it's valuable. Yeah. The, the challenge, though, um, I, would, I would argue, is uh, where we have a little more work to do is you'll hear me and people like me talk about the t- TCO and the value, but the value needs to be spoken in terms of incremental value over our existing path. Okay, we're already virtualizing today, 
Um, so you can't assume the TCO and the value over a do nothing approach. Most companies yeah. are not doing nothing. It's it's an incremental, and that's where most tech companies need to polish their their sales techniques a little bit. What's the incremental value? And um, I think that the, uh, the the second thing um, to get um, some more more traction in general for production SAP uh, is this is not something you just pop in and flip a switch you have to align it with a roadmap or what i call a life event whether it's a, a refresh cycle or a major deployment or a major sap rollout it's it's not something that i'm just going to pull off a shelf and put a new box in there um so there's a, there's a lot more work to do to, to to take it to the next step well talk about the emc component because obviously there's a big announcement here you're part of that let's drill down on that specifically yeah we were at emc world last week we had the cube there and yep. uh, <laughs> it was fun and, and we were asking the question a lot like why does a cio care about infrastructure like wh wh what yeah. does it matter so be interested sure. in sort of hearing yeah, yeah. you know what your perspectives are on that sure <laughs> well e emc in particular a uh, great company longtime partner of ours uh, not only in my levi's role but going going way back in, in multiple roles um, and EMC's transforming from not just a, a storage company anymore to, to being a, a more full service uh, uh, technology provider. And we're, we're pretty excited about that and pretty excited about you know, how they're working with the, with the coalition partners. Because again, it comes back to, I'm less interested in buying storage and I'm less interested in buying servers and I'm less interested in buying software. It's the bundled package mm -hmm. that I'm really interested in. And um, when, when EMC can come together with um, other hardware providers like, like a Cisco, um, and, and software companies like a VMware and SAP and Sell Me Solutions, um, that's really good. And the infrastructure uh, doesn't get a lot of glory. It doesn't get a lot of press. It's not cool. It's not always sexy. It doesn't always sell new product. Um, the board, the CEO, the leadership team doesn't always appreciate it sometimes, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really the heart and soul of, of what makes the company work. Because if a server goes down, if a storage array goes down, um, you know, the application doesn't work and I cannot sell and ship product. So, um, again, proactive IT That's teams. mission critical. Uh, 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 abs <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> You're uh, out of a job, absolutely. it doesn't work. <laughs> absolutely. And, and it's that shift in culture that we were talking about earlier, moving away from break fix to always on and having the partners and the technology that, that allow you to, to deliver that. And, um, you know, to me... Um, we can't just keep throwing redundancy and, and, and scale at our environment because it, it just that creates that, that technology, that server sprawl we've all talked about. Because the more you sprawl, I mean, the more failure modes, the more cost. We've got to be simplified. The more break fix you need, too. It, 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 exactly. Yeah. And, and, and that's why um, the V block, um, which to me, at the risk of oversimplifying, I don't want to call it an appliance because that doesn't do it justice, but to have an integrated solution across the stack uh, to me is of huge value because it, it not only simplifies and reduces the infrastructure, uh, but it, it helps improve my uptime, it helps improve my performance, and I don't have to manage all those multiple failure modes. And the less time I'm doing break fix, and the less time my team is supporting um, multiple components of an infrastructure, I can redeploy those resources, the time, the talent, the dollars, again, the mm -hmm. focus on the programs, the mobility, the front office, the consumer facing, and help the boss sell more product. Yeah, revenue. Right. Yeah. So, so you talked about um, managing your risk before doing that intelligently. So talk a little bit more about how are you managing your risk in this case. Obviously, there's a proof of concept going mm -hmm. on. So, so why is that important, and how do you actually uh, offset some of that risk and mitigate it? Sure. Well, we're, uh, the, the, the rigor and the discipline of our testing process is, is very clearly the, the easiest answer to manage that risk, just having the discipline and the talent uh, to go through uh, the testing processes, okay? Um, I think what, uh, what else we need to do is it's, it's not just the managing the risk of a new product, a new deployment, or a new strategy. It's about understanding the risk of your current state or arguably the risk of do nothing, which is an alternative. And our do nothing alternative has its own set of risk. There is a huge amount of value to be had in, um, in, in driving improved disaster recovery and business continuity. There's a huge amount of value to have in reducing downtime while you're doing hot ads and adding memory and, and, and scalability and CPU. So you've got to balance the risk and the reward. It's kind of stating the obvious, I guess. Um, it's like in your own R&D department. You need, to be, it, you need to be tinkering and playing around it, it, exactly. in these new areas, right? Yeah. That's what you're saying. Exactly, and, and, and much like um, we do on the, the, the product, 
um, for Levi's, uh, we have a similar mindset with the technology. It's all about test and scale. Yeah. Okay, we'll test it, we'll scale it, and if it works, we just keep deploying it, growing it, and and moving over time. So, what historically people will test in a dev environment, then they might yeah. do it in test, and eventually it might get to production someday. Um, test, test, test. That's yeah, the motto, right? I- I- exactly. And, and yeah. people like me, I you know, in, in many cases, I uh, I don't want to even get into that business. I prefer yeah. just in many cases somebody does does it for me. Yeah, yeah. Because every minute, like a coalition, like Cisco, exactly. Uh, VMware, every, EMC, <laughs> SAP. Exactly. Every every minute that that we're talking about testing something is a minute that we're not talking about growing the business. Yeah. So it's ecosystem. It's it's process. It's a exactly. f- intelligently phased approach, and then evolve the right. the, the innovation right. over right. time. And, and and that's a great summary. And, and most importantly, I need the application owner, in this case SAP, to give their stamp of approval and their certification. Because at the end of the day, uh, if you have the best hardware, yeah. network, database, commodity package box, whatever it is, if the application software owner doesn't endorse it, certify it, and support it, I won't pay attention. What is that certification process? I mean, there's been some different discussions around on the on the blogosphere around SAP's uh, compliance and certification. Mm-hmm. How hard is it? Can you have any visibility into that process sure. at all? Yeah, we, we, we have uh, we have some visibility, and it, it, and it and it ranges from everything from making sure the patches and hot fixes are aligned, the versioning are aligned across the different vendors and the different stacks. Um, but um, you know, when when I talk about certification, I'm talking about not only that, but I'm also talking about the supportability. I want to know how to escalate and who to call if something goes wrong. Okay, I want to know that I'm on an upgrade path. I want to know that I'm not out on my own doing some kind of customization or something that's different. Um, I want to know that when something goes wrong within a B block, okay, and I call SAP that there's a problem, uh, people aren't going to do do this yeah. and blame everybody else. That there's an escalation, a chain of command, and some kind of problem resolution structure. So that's really what we're talking about certification, because I don't want to be out there struggling, uh, finding problems uh, as an early adopter of fast follow. But not everyone gets certified, right? I mean, it's like pretty sure. select vendors. Right. Yeah, I, I, I think that that's uh, that's true, and we don't want the certification process. Uh, to be a rubber stamp type of a process yeah. where, you know, hey, hey, it works. You're running your business on it. It's got to be real deal. Can't uh, abs- be some phony. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. And that reinforces, the, you know, the, the importance of the ecosystem. Yeah, we, well, I wanted to bring up, we've been talking last couple of weeks about the stack wars, right? Yeah. Y- and you see now with, with Oracle acquiring Sun, IBM and HP have very, you know, rich stacks, right? Really trying to take control of the IP. Right. And you're seeing EMC and VMware take a, a, a dramatically different approach, right. right? It's the partnership approach with Cisco, now SAP, uh, the services company. We had Howard Elias on. I don't know if you know Howard. He mm-hmm. runs uh, EMC's you know, services division. Mm-hmm. They, they call it cloud services. And, right. and and he said, we asked him, are you going to go buy a service company like Dell, but right, right, Pro right, and HP? Right. He said, absolutely not. It's a means to an end. Right. So, so this coalition has put together uh, different pieces of the, of the ecosystem. It's really totally different philosophies, right. isn't right. it? And you've, you've seen the industry evolve over the last right. you know, 20 years or so. Right. You know, what are your thoughts on that whole progression <laughs> sure. of, of stacks? Yeah, it's, it's, stack it's, wars. it's the stack wars. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of fascinating, actually. In, in, in a recent town hall with, with my department, we actually talked about what's going on because what's going on in the tech se- sector where you, where you see some of the uh, you know the, the ten largest technology companies in S and P five hundred, when in the cash and, and the strategies they have about growing and acquiring their business, um, it really influences how we as CIOs and, and technologists procure product, how we partner, um, how we negotiate, um, how we align ourselves. Um, you know, today we've been talking about VBlock, but I'm also um, uh, you know an HP customer. I'm also an IBM customer. I think very highly of, of those companies as well. Um, and how do you, uh, you know, p- what I'd like to call peacefully coexist? And um, um, I tend to, to lean more towards uh, uh, a, a seamless integration.